Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ravinia Festival. Please locate the exit nearest your seat. The closest exit may be behind you. Please note that the taking of photographs, including the use of camera phones and the use of audio or video equipment, is strictly prohibited. As a courtesy to the artist and your fellow patrons, please ensure that all mobile phones, pagers, and any item that rings, buzzes, or flashes, and has an on-off switch have been silenced. We appreciate your consideration. Thank you for making it a great day at Ravinia.
I so much enjoy, enjoyed it that I forgot that I'm uh, supposed to give a class. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting like in a concert, and I really did enjoy it, even though I think about this piece slightly differently than you. And I think uh, maybe we all have to learn that uh, music is not about right and wrong. It's about is it communicating, beautiful, interesting, and maybe to try to uh, kind of penetrate a little bit the mind of a composer. And uh, so whatever I say, nothing, you know, takes away from, you know, your standard of playing and your musicianship and so. But it would be maybe interesting for you to see how someone else uh, think about the, uh, about the piece. And uh, to begin with, I have to say that I was uh, greatly inspired when I saw the manuscript of Schubert. And I really suggest to look at it. Because, you know, there are some, uh, some stuff that it's beyond, you know, the boing that we are doing, you know, but some stuff that he, he writes it so, like he really wants it, you know, including the, the, the first two bars, the first two bars. I think once I saw the, the, the slur that he wrote under these two bars, I would not in my life divide it in two or three, like some, you know. And then, you know, when you try it, you know. You know, there is, there is nothing, you know, that uh, prevents us to do it, you know. Especially that the music is, you know, kind of piano and it's inside, you know, it's not. There are some stuff like this that I, 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 I would not be able to tell you everything because we have no time, but some of, some of it I will uh, permit myself to tell you with the hope that you will also look. Yeah? So, and there is another reason why I think it should be two, two balls. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is because, you know, there is something, what is so fantastic about this uh, theme is for me is the ca the little curves mm -hmm. that go bigger and bigger. So we go to here and back now to this and higher and higher and higher and higher. And higher. Curve, you know, it's about the curves, and therefore to be nice. These are first curves, so not to. Yeah, can you sign it? Yes. Should I play it with piano or? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Yeah, and then maybe you should not be so already decided, you know, it's and then uh, actually the sonata begins with the piano, it's not an introduction and then tutti or something, so let's, let's hear it. Yeah, so for me, the curve, so uh, right from there.
uh, beautiful. I would do also the, the top of each curve in another way, another, you know, tend to this not differently. Mm -hmm. You know, and it doesn't mean, I don't mean to say that it always have to go up and down in dynamics. Sometimes maybe, you know, like you did beautifully. Almost like a singer, you know, like goes, oh, do, 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 yeah. So maybe last time from, from. I said, I said to someone in a lesson today that uh, I have a statistics about violist, which notes they vibrate and which note they don't. And I noticed that we violist, no, you violist, <laughs> uh, don't like to vibrate first finger for an obscure reason. So the only note I didn't like, you know, now uh, is... Uh, <laughs> So go, go from there and let's continue. Yeah. Okay, so now I go back to my manuscript. Mm -hmm. If you saw how Schubert wrote crescendo, uh, you're up to here, and then the pianissimo. I think you would do it. Okay. You know, if, if, you know how can we not? So from here. Uh, Yeah, go, see, don't, don't, uh, don't be afraid to do the crescendo and to also, you know, the, the sound gun, like you're a singer with a stomach. Yeah, sure. Do it to the... Now, before you continue, if you saw how Schubert wrote, ta -ra legato, you will never do it. Oh. Uh, your forte, you know, and, uh, and we are good violists, no? You know, we can do it. We don't need for any reason to be so comfortable.
Sí. Two notes, yeah, it's beautiful, you know, like it's precious, tender. another subject since we are here, which is everything that Mozart wrote, we say opera, even if he writes a violin concerto or a sonata, is his head, is opera. What about Schumann? Lieder. Lieder. Yeah, and I think here is my discussion about a little disagreement, not disagreement, I will not call it disagreement after what I said before, because you played it very beautifully. But I think that this is a piece which is not meant to show our technique or, our, uh, or to entertain, you know, this is like the leader. And I think it's an incredibly melancholic piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we have stuff like I would say another thing. One of the devices of Schubert in the leader is the re repetitive note that is always, you know, expresses something. Yeah, yeah. So it's not. Oh. Pom 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 is not pom 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 pom. Yeah, you agree. So for me, the After what you do, something really fantastic you do. That I'm not going to imitate because you do it better than me, this Boeing. But I would keep it for the violin Glazunov concerto. You know, when, you know, I think it's. It's not that kind of music, no? <laughs> so try, try one time, and then, you know, if you don't like it, uh, you will play it, you will come back to what you do. But try one time. I Maybe for me. Yeah, there's, there is also not, not Right, crescendo. And subito. I think you would do something else. To tell you the truth, you know, I used to play it actually with one bow. You know why? Because that's the way Schubert wrote it, you know. And then I had to admit 
It's not the most comfortable. Uh -huh. So I seemed, I changed it, but when I, uh, when I uh, changed the bow, I tried to disguise it. Not Wait a little bit and boom, 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 the piano. Yeah. You want to try? Yeah, so. Yeah, uh, yeah, but the, the idea is to finish crescendo until the end. You have a partner, mm -hmm. so if you if you stop, you know you cannot do uh, <laughs> because you know you have no connection and you have to do it together. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe directly. This time it was you who rushed it a little bit by uh, being used to maybe. Yeah, try from there. But you know, I I am used to hear people you know play uh, even uh, staccato and stuff like this, which is ridiculous to me. Yeah, I think you know you wrote you wrote mm -hmm. uh, legato. Why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, from there, the forte. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Don't, don't round the angles too much. Okay. okay. You think you're a singer, okay. and the pride of singer is when you go to the high north, it's the most beautiful and not a harsh. Uh -huh. So try it, um, boom, boom, yeah? I go to another subject now, which is the arrangement of the piece. 
because it's written for an other, another instrument with more strings that we do. And whatever we do, we lose in translation. Yeah? Because, for instance, what the way you play, you are faithful to this, mm. but you don't. To me, the most important thing is the uh, the log note. So I don't want to break it. So I do. And then I, I can enjoy a very nice long note. You want to try it one time? And it's not perfect. It's also lost in translation, but maybe it's preferable. Directly. I think maybe even you know a little more withdrawn. This uh, development, mm -hmm. I have one name pops out to my mind, is Goethe. Mm -hmm. Before it was, you know, I forgot his name, who wrote, you know, uh, the winterizer and stuff that they say, I'm not German, I don't know, they say it, kind of second rate poetry. And you know, I don't know if I subscribe to it or not because I don't understand anything. You know, I, I just know that the music is fantastic. But here is for me the whole thing is Earl Koenig, mm -hmm. Goethe, drama. And you know, in the end of it, in the end of at the end of it, he goes. I don't know if you have. Yeah, you have it. Fortissimo and crescendo. You know, like. Uh, my son, my son, and all this, you know, think about this uh, incredible point. But all this already is not, you know, for me, it's almost they live in the forest now. And mystery, and then it goes on and on, you know, more and more, and then real pianissimo. I think this part should be your drama. Yeah? Uh, can you try to do it? See, so, 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 if you want to do timing, which is necessary here, you have a partner. Mm -hmm. yeah? It should really talk, not talk, talk, and listen to my, my, my wonderful instrument. No, no, no. Sorry to talk like this because, okay. you know, maybe it's beautiful, I don't know, but not to me. Uh, next time. Yeah?
Stück einfach mal. Ja. And nothing. Yeah, so. You know that when you go to your partner mm -hmm. and you do something to him, just directly there. So you can do that. Schubert exactly, but I try to play it with as much convi conviction as I can so that no one can, mm -hmm. yeah, but ta -ri -ta -ra 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 -ra, and then you can stay with the same note. Told you that. I, told me yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. This is the trouble, you know, with your uh, staff, uh, staff pianists. Mm -hmm. uh, they know exactly what. Uh, yeah, but I think you should do it. Uh, uh, because there was a reason why he forgot to to put the thing. So sometimes, you know, sometimes when we have this, even the serious editions, mm -hmm. we should ignore the parentheses, you know. Say, it's not that Schubert forgot. Schubert wrote it, and he, he, he didn't turn the page back to see what did I do the first time. This, this time, it, and you see, after this Goethe thing, it's actually I once played played it with a pianist, friend of mine, who said, first time it was you, but now it's mine. You know, the pianist thought it's his, you know, and he wanted me to play it. Oh, nothing. And at first I thought it was a silly idea, but, you know, there is something into it, you know. So here, like... to skip mm. now uh, because you know, it comes back in, in many ways. Besides that, I will uh, want to point out here <laughs> Schubert does not write the, the, the play. And you can see it that time. You know, I think we could do it. And then, you know, I want to say something about the coda. See, my take of the coda, 
is that someone in the beginning of the century found out that it would be beautiful to do the coda slowly and going away. And so, and the next person who heard it said, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. So I would do it even slower. <laughs> and the next person didn't really understand why we have to play it slow, but everyone is playing it slow. And it became, you know, like I never heard yet someone who doubted a little bit that maybe we could do all this beautiful thing, you know, and continue with our tempo and keep the slow, the dying away to the, to the end. And as every time, you know, I hear that, or every time I play something and I realize that I play that way because everyone else, I remember my, my most uh, lovely quote ever, which was from Salvador Dali. And Salvador Dali said that the first man who compared the cheeks of a woman to roses was a poet. The second man was an idiot. That's, that's, that's what Salvador Dali is saying. So when I do stuff like this, when I play and I realize I play it slower or this or that because other people do, I say, oh, you know what Salvador Dali would call you, yeah? So I think I would like really very much to try one time to do everything beautiful that you did, but... And not strictly the same tempo, I'm not the police here, but, but not suddenly, you know, falling down. Then the last thing I will say is the original arpeggione, and you can, you can check it, is the top note is not an A, it's an E. Mm. And for me, it's kind of... Mm. And then I... Uh, I play it like this, why? Because when I'm finishing with the do dominant, instead of the tonic, yeah. it's like a question, actually. Not, it's the first movement, it's not already team, pom, yeah? But uh, you will try it, yeah? Bravo, bravo.
when I'm talking? Oh, okay, I will tell you. Arpeggioni was a Kli, a kli. Uh, now I'm talking Hebrew. Uh, it was a, a instrument that was invented at the time when Schubert uh, lived. And it was like a, uh, between a string instrument and guitar. And it had, a, or it looked like a guitar that you play with the bow. And it, it had actually the, you know, the, how, how do you call it? Yeah the, yeah, the frets, you know, and uh, just like a guitar. And Schubert wrote this sonata for this instrument, Arpeggioni. And, uh, and then this instrument did not make it. Did not make it. Uh, there were some instruments that were invented that made it, like saxophone or, you know, whatever. This one never made it. And, uh, so, but the music is so fantastic, so uh, other instruments adopted it, and you know, like cello and so, and, but the most beautiful is the viola. <laughs> there is no doubt about that. <laughs> and then, you know, like uh, I was talking about when you arrange the piece, since we, the, this instrument had six uh, strings and we have only four, we have to decide, do we want this or that to change? But uh, there is a uh, great violist, Thomas Riebel, his name, from Austria, who had an instrument built for him with, you know, with six strings and he plays the arpeggione on an instrument, on a viola with six strings like this. Still the most beautiful is on, on the viola. You know, this is a fantastic question that you are asking. The question if, if I am referring to the manuscript, why the students don't have the manuscript? And my answer is, I don't know. <laughs> because everyone today, you know, today with, you know, the uh, our technique, you know, and we are so advanced, it will take them exactly five minutes. No, five is too much, you know, less than to have the manuscript, I bet, you know, to have it in front of them. And, uh, but they are, not, they, they are not used to do it, you know. They need people to, to bug them. And, oh, because this is, uh, this is because uh, people used to edit uh, things. You know, people with big name, like great cellists, you know, uh, who published the piece, but according to their you know, with their dynamics, with their boings and stuff like this. And it, uh, today, almost everyone know, uh, knows that there are some editions that are faithful to the composer and some editions that are not faithful to the composer. Still, some people, you know, buy, you know, stuff, you know, edited by, uh, and, and some of it is, you know, I consider almost a crime against humanity. You know, uh, the changes, you know, who they think they are, you know. But most, uh, fortunately, most students today, they know that they, they have access to better editions. And, uh, but yet, you know, manuscript, you know, like it's the most fantastic thing that we can uh, read from because it's no interference from other, yeah.
good. I want to say something to the audience. This is really a difficult piece. And those are four really talented people with serious, serious work. Great. What are you making of this movement? Yeah, like what, what are your thoughts, your guide, guidelines? Huh? Not so happy. No, especially not the Nestor. Yeah. Actually, in the Vivace, there are moments, lighter moments. I think the, the Nestor means what? Said, you know, and there are four Nestors in this, the whole quartet. And uh, each movement begins with a mesto. Besides that, the last movement is the whole, the whole movement is the mesto said. And apparently, I don't know if you know, that uh, he was going to write another movement to finish with a folky, uh, happier st stuff. But things happen, happened in Europe, you know, that he thought it, it's not appropriate to finish, him, you know, with this. Uh, he was even angry against Hungary, you know, the, uh, about uh, the government, you know, and the accord that they made with the Nazis. So he, you know, the, of course, the two middle movements are result of his uh, sarcasm, you know, and at the same time, his mother was dying. Yeah, his mother was dying. This was all thirty-nine, I think. Yeah, his mother was dying, so he, he couldn't. And he all is he all he was thinking is just to leave the country and to go to the United States. He could not because of his mother. But the moment she passed away, he went to the uh, United States. And so. There is, you know, the whole quartet is, you know, kind of a quartet which has to do with the war. The, the movement that you played, though, besides the mesto that announces, you know, is try to be normal, you know, to be playful. Still, you know, you can, in my opinion, you can hear that he's nervous, you know, it's nervous playfulness. And, you know, like the, the, the voices are changing all the time, you know, you, it doesn't leave you anything, you know, to play beginning to the end phrase, you know, like you begin and another person uh, plays, but yet it's kind of playful. Then I made also uh, an observation about the, the, the four mesto, uh, is that Untypically, do you say untypically or atypically? Atypically. He doesn't write espressivo in first mesto. He writes espressivo, writes espressivo on the second, you know, doesn't write on the third, and write one on the fourth. Yeah. And I think, you know, we should. Uh, you know, and you did, you did well, you know, because sometimes I hear this, maybe I also played it way, that way when I was young, you know, to take the viola and to show how great a violist I am, and, you know, to, you know, mesto and stuff. I think you did well. You kind of stayed, you know, kind of with his instructions, besides one that I am going to tell you, but, uh, and I think it's good, you know, just, you know, stay almost. Without personal, too much of a personal. That's the way I would play it today. Yeah. And, uh, but mezzo forte, not piano. Yeah. Uh, maybe we could try that.
Yeah, make sure though, because he wrote legato, yeah? That when you go that I don't hear the crossing. Yeah. Something that is easy to say and very difficult to know. You don't really want to change the color on the other line. So if you play fourth finger or the G string, you have to work and find how you could, com you know, kind of balance between tira, maybe the E a little more tense and the D a little, I don't know, it's up to you to find, or to play open, open string. Do the second one, and try. Now, if Good, and if you can imitate that with the G string, that will be fine with me, you know. No, 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 Tira, imitate, you know, in other words, the, oh, the yeah. last note a little. Oh, it's... Hey, I'm, I'm stupid, but not that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so now, now try to go to the other thing, but equalize between. Yeah, good. Yeah. More and more vibrato now with the crescendo. No, 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 no. Tiro, ro, ri. Suddenly, do exactly what he wrote. Yeah. Yeah, see, and here, I would not wait that much. I would do the accent. Probably it would be better to, to reverse the both, but it's fine. And then, you know why I don't want too much of stop? Because when you play this, it's debatable, but I think he refers to a piece by Beethoven, which is uh, his quartet, Opus 135, where he, uh, he, there is a question, must it be? And then the thing is, it must be, yeah? But wherever, whereas, and, and this is, it must be, yeah? But whereas Beethoven, it must be, with Bartok is resignation. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it must be so. And then your beginning refers to another Beethoven, beginning of the Grosse Fugue, you know, which also begins, you know, with with uh, octave, all the all the uh, the quartet. So let's do this octave. And then, you know, about about this beginning, we have to think the way why I say, and and I like the way we played it. And I don't like the way I played it when I was your age, or even a little, is because it's not about us being said. I think the second movement, yes, but here is sadness. You know, is he said the word said, you know, and it's not uh, you are said or she is said, you know, it's sadness, you know, so it's with more restriction, you know. Good, so the octaves now. <laughs> My first, my first uh, advice, when you tune your instrument before, I think you should tune note by note, you know, and especially here, you know, you want to, the most pure G and what I hear is not. Let, let, let's do it now quickly. Give the G. Yeah, yeah it, just the G for now. G. Because you, you, you want the most pure G in the beginning, yeah? And then how to tune in a quartet, uh, if you are interested, I can spend an hour talking about it. I'm not going to do it now, it's too technical. For the audience, they are going to kind of fall asleep. Uh, but, uh, you know, at least this note you know, should really... in doubt a little bit is the C sharp because everyone interpret it in another way. I think not too close. No, it's not even a leading uh, tone. Not too close, but the same. You know, I hear the little, yeah. And add to it the same, uh, the same type of bow and vibrato to really make it. Same goes to the A flat, you know. Okay. That was great, you know. It didn't take you half an hour to practice or anything. You know, it's great. Yeah, let's do it again. It's enough to really think about it, you know, to. Spend some time doing, you know, because it has to be all pure. You know, it was almost there, not not quite in the end. The note which was not good was the C natural this time. Yeah, but uh, it's it's worth spending time. You think about going fortissimo to forte? Maybe a little bit even more. Yeah, so it's more clear. Last time.
Great. So that was that sounds really good. Uh, I want to say something about the whole movement now. A thing for you to to when you practice by yourself the parts. For me, I always talk about it, but here more than any other piece is when you cross the strings. You know, uh, I think you should learn to really kind of anticipate with the elbow or something to bring the in advance the bow to the next string so that we don't hear it. And not only this, sometimes we don't know it, but when we cross string, it takes time. So the timing is not exactly the same. Uh, play yours. Yeah, so, so, you know, prepare it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, do it. See, I hear like this, you know. Even, even, even earlier, no. try to do it slowly one time and, uh, and already. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, can be even more legato. It's better. So I think if you worked on, I will not annoy you too much about this, if you worked all the movement like this, you know, individually, the result will be great and also I think you will gain something technically because I hear it all the time. Maybe I'm a little obsessed with this. My students all, always think I'm obsessed about it because once, you see, when we do it, we don't hear it because we are kind of forgiving ourselves. But w when we hear other people, you know, we hear you know, this, this thing and we don't want to hear it. In this movement, it's so important because it has to be very smooth passage from one to another. So I will not annoy you with this. I would like to say something else. You know, like a little bit more. Not so shapeless. Good. Yeah. I have a question for you. I'm sure you heard Hungarian people talk. Hungarian people, you heard. Yes. Did you? You did? So what's what's so interesting about their talking? The, the, it's the first syllable, always, you know. My name is not Atar Arad, it's Atar Arad, yeah? That's how I, my teachers were all Hungarians, you know, and they are they, they, Atar. Yeah? I had the teacher who said, Atar, you are an idiot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when I didn't do whatever he wanted, yeah? Uh, so, and if every syllable is important, but the first one is more important than the second. Yeah, but more defined. Same energy. You are a little less energy than the other in this, just in this uh, crescendo. Yeah? 
I, I advise you uh, to hear her. She has started all oh, 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 oh. so a little bit less so to allow her. Hmm? For me, it's not with warmth, but so that it speaks more Hungarian. Yeah. And different, the two of you, yeah? No, no, when she, you know, you are These two sixty notes, which I didn't hear now. Uh, any place you you say you eighty nine. So, question: You don't have piano? Yeah, no, not only you, yeah. No, you. You. Yeah, a little less. Here too, here too. I, I would, you know, not, no, 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 no. And then uh, my one advice, it sounds very good, you know, but one advice, you know, do a lot in your rehearsals. Do a lot of uh, two, two people play, especially when one, not, not only the places that is together, are together, but the places that you have to continue each other, so, and the two others are listening and telling you if it sounds continuous and if it's the, if it's the same. Yeah? So let's do like 126 or something. Okay. And this, play the two of you. It's not exactly, you know, yeah. it's difficult, yeah? You know, like, m my way of doing this, one of you plays it, yeah? And then you agree or disagree. You, you say, you know, it's good, so then you imitate, mm -hmm. try to imitate. If you think that, uh, you know, the other one does something that you would like to correct, you say, and it doesn't mean that you say to the other one you are a bad violinist or you don't play tune. It's just try a little sharper, a little lower, and that's it. 
Let's do it one time like this. You play. And you listen. Everyone listen, but you listen specially, and then you will either, if you agree, you copy. Okay? Okay? Even one more time, and then do me a big favor. Do -do -do -do. You know, like we hear too much of ta. Do -do -do -do. Okay? Okay? Try to imitate, but I, I was talking even about the intonation, you see, yeah. Okay, the C sharp. Okay, so it's not perfect yet, but uh, I think if you take some time to do this, you will need less and less time because you will get accustomed to each other. Yeah, but it, it really, in the beginning, it, need, it needs the time, you know, because a, a quartet is as good as the octaves. Yeah. When you hear a quartet that doesn't have good octaves, uh, uh, that's not <laughs> such a good quartet. Yeah. Okay, together. I want to be fair. Do it. Yeah, no, try together to see where you are. Maybe it's perfect. I have a question for you. Where did you take this huge retinuto that you are doing before it's written? Okay. You are doing a huge slowing down before, before this is deliberate or? Yeah, plain tempo, try, you know, until un poco retinuto. So maybe from 137. I expect, you know what I'm expecting? The most in tune chord you have ever played. <laughs> because after all this, it, it, it happens two times in this movement. If the, you know, this, this is an important mo moment, you know, to after all this, to, suddenly you have a simple chord, it should, uh, yeah, let's build it. I, we build it from the top because you are the first to play. You play, you see. Yeah, but I need a, an A too. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then make sure, make sure for this chord that you really have exactly this. If you, if you vibrate, same vibrato. If you don't, don't vibrate, the same non vibrato, but the, the board the same, yeah? The two of you and the two of you. Good? Yeah, that, that's good, yeah? And I, there is another chord, you know, later, the same. So let's try it and then we will finish because we need to finish. Uh, uh, so I would like to play just before, no ritenuto, passing from each other and finish with the most in tune chord we've ever played. How is this for a pressure? yet. So, but you have to promise me to work on it, yeah? And I'm not sure, I'm not sure that uh, first position... I know, but they can control... I'm not sure, you know, you, you, will, you will try. I, I do have two more things to say. Uh, the next... Yeah? I think you should, uh, when you enter, you should drop because it's canon this time and I really want to hear clearly every note, every entry, you know, that... Uh, to, to yeah, yes, to hear, you know, every entry. Uh, the last thing I would say is, did you check the metronome? Yes. And the metronome is faster, yes? Always. Yeah. Yeah, I know this movement a little, a little faster. And it will come, you know, I think this is why I didn't stop you. I don't think it suddenly you have to play it uh, fast and it's good enough. But w as long as you go, you have how many, three more weeks to do it? Two. Two. Yeah, so every day, you know, you know, and a little faster and a little clearer, yeah, which is easy to say and difficult to do. This is why it's so wonderful to give a class because you can say anything you want and other people have to do it. <laughs> but I remember how difficult this quartet was. You know, I really do, yeah. Good, bravo. Thank you very much. This is your show.
So, again, bravo. And uh, I have some other ideas. Yeah. I think, for me, this piece is about both death. And uh, how do I know that? How do I know that it's about death? As a general? Yeah, the whole piece, the whole sonata, for me, is three different aspects of death. And I will say it, you know, first of all, you know, like, it's his last piece, you know that. Every, mo every movement, in this sonata is finishing with what? Morendo, yeah. to die, which is unusual, yeah? A little the same as Bartok begins, every movement with Mesto, Sed, this one, every movement, Morendo. Plus, in the second movement, there is other Morendo. Now, the second movement that you didn't play is about the devil. How do I know that? Very simple, you know, because, you know, at one point, uh, you know, if the devil tune is violin, so the Russian devil, all the has a violin. We know it, yes, this is from Stravinsky and others. And, uh, and that the devil <laughs> Yeah, the devil. And there is exactly this in the, in the second movement. Uh, the third movement, people say, you know, compare it to Moonlight Sonata. I, I don't think, you know, I think, you know, is the funeral rhythm. Pom, 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 you know, is funeral rhythm. And this is according to Shostakovich, that there is a quote from one of his symphony. You know, like from the third movement. Shostakovich uses it in one of his symphony, and he said, you know, for him, this is the march of death. Which is the obsession of the last movement. And I think what the idea of death here for me is, you know, the first movement is the clock, which is ticking. You know, all your life, you know, whatever, some moments seem to you uh, going fast because you're happy, some because, you know, slow because you're bored, whatever, but the truth is that you, you are born and you, clock is ticking. And I think, you know, that uh, Shostakovich felt, you know, he wrote it as the last piece, he was already sick, and he, he felt his clock ticking. Therefore, to come to this movement, movement I do something unusual here, and un unusual for me, is, I say, since is the clock ticking, my clock in this movement, I try to have him tick from beginning to the end of the movement. You know, it's one of the few uh, pieces of music that I will take the metronome and I, I, I will not only work the metronome so that I, you know, keep the tempo, I would keep on the beat, you know, which I, I will never do, you know, we always want to phrase, you know. Here I will keep it, and from the beginning to the end. So no matter if I play, uh, inside of it, even when you play. same tempo, and I would keep it, you know, without any rubato. That's why, you know, it's unusual, but I would not do any rubato in this 
movement. Even in the cadenza, you know, even in the cadenza uh, that you played freely, I would, you know, I would play. Just do that. And I would like to try a little bit. And you know, I have to say something, you know, that's kind of interesting because this instrument is kind of a little sad, you know, lugubre. And you know, some composers use this instrument to write their last pieces. You know, when they felt, you know, already it's the end of their life. And uh, the other one, that's, of course, his last piece, Shostakovich's. And then uh, Bartok wrote his viola concerto. It was his absolute last piece, actually unfinished. Debussy, the sonata, the viola, and uh, the flute and harp, last piece. And there are other pieces, including a piece that was written for me by a very good composer by the name of Andrei Tchaikovsky, who, you know, uh, who was going to write for me a concerto. And he, he said to me, you know, I will write it when I, uh, after they finish with my opera, because there was an opera of his, the Covent Garden. But then I met him socially, and he said, you know, I already begin, uh, you know, began your concerto. And I said, uh, and yeah, Andre, I know how it begins. It begins with solo viola before the orchestra is coming. He said, how did you know? He said, I guessed. <laughs> anyway, he passed away before, uh, before, uh, you know, uh, before, uh, before he even began, you know, the, the thing. You know, it's kind of, maybe it has significance, you know, that composers, you know, are attached to this instrument just before they die. Yeah. And I have to say, you know, about th this sonata in general, you know, like I feel something before we begin to try what I said, you know, the piano, you know, a very little, you know, here, not, not in any comparison to other piano pieces, you know, very uh, few notes. And uh, one day, I was in Paris, and there was an exhibition, which was uh, Picasso's portraits, only portraits of people. And it was, you know, huge, you know, enormous exhibition, and there were uh, uh, portraits that he did of people he knew, or of people he imagined, and so, including of course, of course, all his mistresses and his wives, and uh, there is one. There was one wonderful from Stravinsky, and so. But what struck me most was the last, the last portrait at, at the exhibition before you go out. It was called autoportrait, you know, self-portrait. But all you saw, all you saw is some kind of one line, you know, like curving like this, and that's it. And at first you say, what does it mean autoportrait? Just one line like this. When you look closely, you see not only that it's the face of Picasso brought to, to the essential and nothing else, not only it's the face, you can see also that only Picasso could do this line. You know, this is absolutely amazing. And I was thinking afterwards, you know, for me, this Shostakovich sonata is the same. It's his last portrait. It doesn't need all this note and effects and stuff like this. That's the essential, you know. And I try to keep it in mind when I'm uh, playing. So just to, to try it, I would like to be meticulous about the beat. Then I would say this, you know, I think it's too slow.
or one, one or four. Yeah. Yeah, and all, you know, don't be musical. And you will not hear me say it many times. I would get red in my face for this crescendo and keep the Boeing that he wrote. Mm -hmm. So, because, see, there is another thing, you know, that we always want to be, be comfortable. This is not comfortable music, so I would... Keep the tempo. now that you keep the, the same tempo and you don't move, then you could give it life, Russian life, you know, maybe I would do Why? 
of this quintet. Piano quintet he has exactly the same. And he writes, a boy writes the, yeah. So, you know, that, that what, you know, and no, no battle whatsoever. Let's just do like this the cadenza. And then we will finish. Because I think, see, when he has the fingers like this, that means time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, time. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's good. So let's do to 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 to. Yeah, so and you can do stuff, and this is good for the whole piece. Dolce sound that he asks. Uh, Shostakovich came to my dream, in my dream, and he told me, Atar, he did. Uh, I said, okay, like, it really happened. But this is the way I do it. For me, that, that makes much, personally, it makes for me much more sense. Yeah. Good. Bravo.